So I wanted to say, uh, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, I do very much appreciate this warm and cordial welcome. I know that many people are looking around and they're very surprised that I'm here this evening, and I've got to tell you, I'm pretty surprised also. <laughs> Normally, I get $300,000 to show up, and you can bet you that these cheap bastards didn't pay that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, that's my good friends. Butler, Fairman, and Sufert. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I... Oh, go ahead, sir. It's no big deal. Just the former president of the United States of America up here. <laughs> A little bit longer, you might have had a body cavity search. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I am very excited to be here. I mean, after all, this is an election year, and I feel like I'm among friends, whether or not you, you did support me or not. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Let's, let's cut to the mustard here. First off, you're saying, I haven't seen you for a while, Bill. You've lost weight. Well, this is part of my new thing. I've become a vegan. Uh, and contrary to what George W. Bush thinks, that doesn't mean I expatriated and joined a new country. That means I eat vegetables a lot now. Uh, George W., as many of you know, is not that smart. <laughs> when he was the president, they said, what are you gonna do about avian flu? He says, I'm gonna cancel my trips to avia. <laughs> said, no, George W., they're talking about bird flu. He says, I'm gonna cancel my trips to Turkey, too. And I gotta tell you, I know what it's like being president, taking on these important healthcare issues. When I was president, <laughs> We had never seen a threat to the food supply until I was president, and then I took on Mad Cow. First week in office, all my aides come into the Oval Office, Mad Cow, Mad Cow. I thought they'd just seen Hillary on a tantrum. <laughs> and now, of course, uh, Obama had to deal with swine flu, and the funniest thing about that is, in Washington, D.C., everybody got swine flu except for Dianne Feinstein, Joe Lieberman, and Al Franken. That joke was for the 0.4% Jewish population in the state of Indiana. <laughs> this entire thing about me losing weight came on because of Chelsea's wedding. <laughs> and God knows if you look at how she looked back when she was 14, you wouldn't have seen a wedding in that girl's future. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, she got married like... Keep explaining it to him. Yeah, he'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> Chelsea's my daughter. <laughs> and she got married. Follow along. The thing is, Chelsea gets married last summer, and everybody makes a big deal out of it. And Hillary, you know, always the mother hen, she says, Now, Chelsea, you're getting married to this boy, and it's so lovely, but tell me, have you been having sex with him? <laughs> Chelsea says, Not according to Dad. <laughs> Is, I want to go ahead and put things in perspective here. I don't care what your politics are. We can all agree that I was a great president. <laughs> you start comparing me to the big names, you know, the Millard Fillmores and the Chester Arthurs. <laughs> Those were presidents. <laughs> Unlike Barack Obama, there's no debating. I was born in the United States of America. <laughs> Granted, it's Arkansas. <laughs> But technically, that still applies. <laughs> What's funniest about that is people from Evansville even laughed at Arkansas. But anyway, <laughs> when I was president, I did not cost the United States taxpayers a trillion dollars a week. I mean, for a trillion dollars a week, I could have had affairs with attractive women. President Obama takes over General Motors, Chrysler, several banks, several institutions that are involved in investment, the whole entire healthcare industry. Nobody says a peep. I tried taking over Bosnia and people got after me. <laughs> Most importantly, when y'all was president, your 401ks were fat. The economy was good, there was no crime, there was no wars, y'all had money. And you impeached the guy that got you there. <laughs> so to you Republicans in the room, let me just say this. Piss off. <laughs> 
And I want to talk to you for a second about this impeachment, ladies and gentlemen. This was brought on by a bunch of jealous guys. Jealous guys, happy, envious, because I got a little nookie on the job. <laughs> and let's face it, we all would if we could. <laughs> Some of you do. <laughs> and I'm getting old now. I'm 66 years old. And it's funny because a gal not too long ago, she says to me, you know, President Clinton, you're not even funny anymore. I mean, you're sexual. You're picadillos. It ain't even funny. You're just a dirty old man. I'm like, what's the big deal? Am I the only guy that hangs around in the produce section wearing nothing but his socks? <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but I mean, now that I'm aging, I do have some health issues. This is kind of what happens. You start getting older, you start having some health problems. And I, you know, I went to the hospital with my heart problems. I'm on blood thinners, you know, blood pressure. I'm on like seven different pills. And some of you older guys can, can relate to this. Well, you get confused. And here I was a couple weeks ago, I accidentally took my dog's worm pills. You ever done that? You know, and it's embarrassing enough, you're taking your dog's worm pills, two hours later you're scooting your butt across the carpet. That's embarrassing when company's coming over, I'll tell you that. Does that happen to you? <laughs> I'm supposed to talk about current events. My good friend, John Brand, <laughs> asked me to do that. I'd be a lot better friends with you if you'd pay me more to come here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're going to talk about the economy. And ladies and gentlemen, I understand the economy is in a rough shape. I mean, let's face it. My book sales are off 29%. I understand that people are hurting. How many people in here have read my books? My Life? <laughs> Giving? <laughs> the third one I can't remember the title of? <laughs> well, the hell with you people. <laughs> the funny thing is about these books, George W. Bush has a book out, and let's face it, he ain't bright. <laughs> Can you imagine reading all them pages with words like miscontribulate? <laughs> The thing is, it's called Decision Points. It was originally called Point to Point. Let's face it, it's a connect the dot book. <laughs> I'd say we've got a 70% Republican audience here today, okay? <laughs> Speaking of this whole thing, gas prices are now approaching 4 and $5 a gallon, and everybody says, is this going to affect the presidency? Absolutely, it's going to affect the presidency. We now have gasoline. It's about as expensive as my cologne. <laughs> At the cash... At the uh, pump, they have a couple of new methods. You heard this. Obama wants to ease the pain a little bit, so it's going to be cash, credit, 30-year fixed, 5-year adjustable. <laughs> I want to talk to you about something very honest, because I know here we are in uh, Lafayette, Indiana. <laughs> if we want to revive this economy in this country, we have one simple answer. We're not to the punchline yet, honey. <laughs> if we want to revive the economy in this country, we have one simple answer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very simple. We've got to take over China and make them the 51st state. <laughs> I mean, you think of it, Chinese people would fit into the current America. They're used to not being able to pay for gas, living four generations in one house, not having food. Everything we use, they made. More importantly, what we'd ought to do is just swap California for China. <laughs> we get rid of the flakes. We don't have to change the flags. <laughs> That's funny because there's 50 stars and it'd be f anyway. <laughs> I mean, you think of it, we get rid of California and we take China. Basically, the number of foreigners in this country remains about the same. Got a politically correct audience here tonight. <laughs> I want to talk to you about Guantanamo. Ladies and gentlemen, that's always a good subject. That is a prison base in Cuba. Somebody interpret that for the crowd? Anyway, we just spent $750,000 of United States taxpayer money to build a soccer field down there for a bunch of Arabian terrorist prisoners. You guys hear about this? I mean, so obviously somebody has a brother-in-law that builds soccer fields. <laughs> you guys are all government officials. You know how this game works. <laughs> An acre of dirt and a little grass seed, 750 grand. Yeah, I'm a soccer field constructor also. <laughs> 
And yeah, face it, when Bush and Cheney were in charge of Guantanamo, we didn't spend this kind of money on recreation. A board, some rope, a water tank. <laughs> if you've ever actually watched soccer, waterboarding would be more exciting by comparison. <laughs> I mean, I'll grant you, I don't know the rules to waterboarding, but I don't know the rules to soccer either. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious who's losing. <laughs> oh, it's going to get a lot worse, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might opt for the body cavity search here in a little while. I don't know if you guys heard that uh, Hollywood is coming out with a new movie this spring, Three Stooges. Even Hollywood won't recognize Ron Paul. <laughs> Which brings me to politics 2012. This is exactly why my good friend, Tom Wall, put your phone down or it'll get rubbed up somewhere you don't want it to be. <laughs> if you're wondering how I know him, he, uh, he's a big supporter and a big Democrat. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, I, I got to tell you something about this election. I've got a lot of opinions here, and that's why Mr. Uh, Brand asked me to be here. <laughs> Every single election, the Republicans trot out the same old white guys. Ron Paul, Newt Gingrich, Ronald Reagan, Sonny Bono, <laughs> Gerald Ford, Barry Goldwater. Well, them guys are dead, aren't they? <laughs> they might as well be running. <laughs> And it ain't just the same old, they're starting to get women. And let's face it, this is a good thing. It started with 2008, they got Sarah Palin. This year they brought in Michelle Bachman. We'll tell you something about them two girls. They're hot. <laughs> I mean, if Al Gore were to look like either of them, we wouldn't have the interns. What I, think Michelle, what I think Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin prove is something very fundamentally about this entire country that people don't want to admit. Republican women are more attractive than Democratic women. At least when they wear makeup and shave their armpits. I keep seeing these, these middle-aged attractive women that are running for office and I keep wondering why, why, why? And then finally I found out Mary Kay Cosmetics went out of business. I just wrote that on the way over here, to be honest with you. <laughs> the only Republican that's not running for president right now is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, it's because he's born in another country. <laughs> I'll let you take that one wherever you want to take it right there. <laughs> he's got marital problems. You heard this. Maria Shriver, Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're kind of split up right now. She called him up and says, Arnold, I've got a friend that's a marriage counselor. I think we'd ought to get together. He says, great, a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> he said it in a voice that you would understand, but I don't speak that language, all right? <laughs> I want to talk now. We're starting to have a good time, aren't we? You guys from South Bend? Lake County. I've always liked the way they do things up there. <laughs> Let's look at who the Republicans voted off the island. Ladies and gentlemen, they got rid of Herman Cain. I like Herman Cain. He likes the women. I think he deserves a little bit of credit. He's been CEO of a pizza franchise the rest of us thought went bankrupt 40 years ago. <laughs> They got rid of John Huntsman. You guys remember John Huntsman? Trying to run as the second Mormon. The only thing more difficult than getting elected president as a second Mormon is being the third Bush. It's kind of a smart one for you right there. You engineers are a crack up. Donald Trump, bad for the country, good for comedy. Newt Gingrich, which makes you wonder. When is Newt Gingrich going to finally figure out people hate him? <laughs> I mean, good God. I mean, people just absolutely do not like that guy, and he will not go away. And i got to tell you something funny. When I look at Newt, you ever notice you look at somebody, they look like their name? 
I don't know what a newt is. But by God, when you look at Gingrich, he looks like a newt. Now, Mitt Romney doesn't look like an old leather mitt. <laughs> Hillary does. <laughs> Ron Paul kind of makes me laugh. I mean, first off, when I look at him, he reminds me of Jeff Dunham's puppet, Walter. <laughs> and the thing is, he's getting old and he runs every year. And the thing is, he's very big on just free market, leaving things alone. The only problem is when he starts, because he's like 72, when he starts talking about trickle down, <laughs> that means he wet his pants. <laughs> when he talks about trickle down, to me that says lift your feet. One thing that I think we all know is going to happen, those of us that are observers of politics, we know that 2012 is not going to be historic the way 2008 was, right? I mean, 2008 was a historic year. Just on the Democratic side, we had a choice, black man, white woman. And then we found out Michael Jackson was a little bit of both. <laughs> Let's talk about Barack Obama now. I mean, they're saying in the media this guy might just get reelected because there's no way the Republicans can figure it out. I want to tell you something. The media loves this guy. He's basically a skinny Oprah Winfrey with bigger ears. <laughs> and speaking of skinny, I want to say something about Barack Obama. He, he has got 46 million Americans on food stamps trying to feed them, feed them, feed them. And his wife's pet cause is obesity. <laughs> You guys starting to understand this doesn't make any sense? <laughs> I mean, I finally called him up and said, hey, Obama, I mean, you have 46 million people on food stamps. Your wife goes on TV every day, says people are eating too much. Figure it out. You know what? Save the government money. Have the skinny kids eat the fat kids. <laughs> Takes care of the epidemic. Gets people off the welfare rolls. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a good idea. That's what we do in Arkansas. Barack Obama's on TV every single day pitching some new thing he's trying to sell us on. That's the thing that bothers me the most. I mean, is this guy every single day is on TV. Is he the President of the United States or the new pitch man for OxyClean? <laughs> and speaking of, of things he's done, to, two years ago, you guys probably saw this, maybe not in Germany, <laughs> but he went and got a new dog. And of course, like all these, you know, elitists, he couldn't get just a normal dog. He had to get a Portuguese water dog. You guys heard about this? And everybody, you know, me and George W. Bush were in a little panel on 60 Minutes. That's a television show for old people. <laughs> You're a viewer, I'm sure, aren't you? <laughs> so me and George are there, and they're, they're asking this question. They said, hey, what do you think about this dog, this Portuguese water dog? <laughs> Sounds to me like something Michael Phelps smokes his marijuana out of. <laughs> Portuguese, pass me the Portuguese water dog. <laughs> gurgle, gurgle. And, and someday, Mayor, when you're old enough to actually buy marijuana, anyway. <laughs> for that matter, when you're old enough to vote. But anyway, I will tell you something that's funny about this, though. They turned it to George W. Bush. And like I said, he's, he's a little bit slow. They said, George W., what do you think about Obama's Portuguese water dog? And Obama says, why couldn't he get an American dog? Like a German Shepherd. <laughs> Funny thing is, Barack Obama asked me when he got that dog, he says, whatever happened to your White House dog? I said, she's your Secretary of State. <laughs> I'll tell you something that's interesting about that deal is, is that America has always been viewed by all the foreigners as in a people that are aggressive, obnoxious, with poor fashion sense. And we've been sending Hillary out there for three years. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Barack Obama, of course, has been touting green jobs. He's gotten a lot of credit for this, although I don't know what a green job is. He's got a lot of arrogance about this. I asked him, actually, a couple years ago, I said, hey, Obama, what is a green job? He made me mow the yard. 
<laughs> He's getting a lot of credit for killing Osama bin Laden. And everybody says, what do you think about this? You were the president for eight years. What would you have done? Well, first off, it wouldn't have taken me this long. What do you mean? What would you have done different? I said, wait a minute. Between Bush and Obama, it took 10 years to find Osama bin Laden. They said, yeah, what would you do different? Well, first off, I would look at the country of Pakistan, and I would see they have one house with electricity. <laughs> I might start by looking there. <laughs> we took the Navy SEALs, this amazing military unit that is, I mean, amazing. And it still took them all this time. And they said, would you have needed the SEALs? No. I would have found a more elite unit. I know of a group of men that high, they, they find the unfindable. I'm talking about the Gideons. <laughs> now, some of you are laughing. Anybody in this room that's ever stayed in a cheap motel in some godforsaken town that you've never heard of, that is not even on the map, go to the nightstand. And the Gideons found that place first. <laughs> if I was president of the United States, and I was looking for Osama bin Laden, I would have gone to the Oval Office and I would have brought in a dozen Gideons. I'd pull down a map of the Indian subcontinent, circle it and say, there's a Motel 6 over there. <laughs> They'd have found him within like a day. <laughs> to which I kept saying to myself, if all they're gonna do, if the entire goal of this operation was to track down Osama bin Laden and shoot him in the head, why didn't they send him bird hunting with Dick Cheney a decade ago? <laughs> Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden's a pompous ass. I actually don't have any material on that subject. That's pretty much. George W. Bush has not endorsed anybody in this Republican race yet. And of course, all four of them said, thank you, thank you, thank you. So all you Dems in the room right now, we're going to go ahead and talk about George W. Bush. Let's face it, he limped out of office. He left office with an approval rating of 18. That's people, not percent. <laughs> Basically like it's his mother and his brother and a couple of them. Anyway, it's amazing to me. But Mitt Romney wants the endorsement. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Mitt Romney. You will not have any sex scandals with that guy. A dozen wives, probably, but no sex scandals. <laughs> I don't begrudge Romney for being rich. A lot of people are picking on him about this. I begrudge him for being boring. <laughs> Donald Trump was rich, but for God's sakes, at least he was colorful. Mitt, if you want to do something fun for us, change your hair. Buy a casino, marry a hooker, do something for God's <laughs> sakes. Talk to a hooker. Dress up and drag and be a hooker. Worked for Hoover. <laughs> I told you it's going to get worse, didn't I? <laughs> now we're going to talk about my buddy Rick Santorum. I know there's a lot of people in this room that are saying, I can't wait until the Indiana primary, October 29th, <laughs> when we can make our voices heard for the rest of the country. And I can vote for Rick Santorum. I want to tell you something about Rick Santorum. I honestly do not think that he is going to make much of a president. I think he'd make one hell of a televangelist. Some of you chuckle. Every time that man goes on television and talks about God, people send money. You think he's not having an impact? Just this Sunday, I watched the TV morning shows. I'm talking about the religious ones. Pat Robertson, Billy Graham, and Joel Osteen have all switched to wearing sweater vests when they preach right now. Okay, if any of you watched the news, you would have been laughing your ass off at that joke right there. <laughs> you know, if Rick Santorum and his religious people do have their way with his health care and women's issues, he's going to affect more vaginas than I did, and that's saying something. <laughs> and I want to cover that real quick also. I know this has been a hot button with Rush Limbaugh, the contraceptives and all this. I'm a big fan of contraception. It's kept me out of a lot of hot water. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that subject right now. 
One of the things that the, uh, the people of BFS asked me to do <laughs> was to be here for your questions because I know that it's not every day that the people of Posey County see a former president of the United States of America. So I decided I would take questions. I'm talking about questions of a non-mathematical, non-technical, <laughs> non-controversial nature. Anybody in this room that might have a question now, would you please stand up and I'd like to hear from you and I'll do the best I can to shed a little light on it. Does anybody have any questions at all? Yes, sir. Yes. As a young aspiring leader, sir, I do have a question for you. Given the current state of the global situation, if you were still in office, what would you do to remedy this? If I was president right now, <laughs> We've got two different wars going on. The economy's going broke in about every country. We've got gasoline prices hitting for. If I was president now, I'd be drunker than a monkey. <laughs> sure. I was drunk half the time anyhow, to be honest. I'm drunk right now. <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. That's a good question. <laughs> I got to tell you, when you look at them Afghan people, I think that honestly their problems begin and end with their blankets. <laughs> That'd be Afghan blankets. Some of you are chuckling, but let me tell you something. Any of you that ever spent the night with your grandmother? You know how hard it is to stay warm with a piece of yarn that's got holes all over it? I don't think them Afghans want a war. I think they'd be happy with a down comforter. Uh, we've got time for at least a couple more questions. Any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. As for the uh, <laughs> as for the library, let me just tell you, building that presidential library in Arkansas was the toughest thing I've ever accomplished in my career. I mean, honestly, I, I guess a couple of you didn't hear that. I just used the word library in Arkansas <laughs> in the same sentence. So, <laughs> I think that I deserve a little credit for building, I mean, for crying out loud, the first week we were open, thieves broke in and stole the book. <laughs> <laughs> and as for your other question about Monica's involvement there, I wouldn't say that she's the head librarian, but I would say uh, Monica has, still has a position on my staff. <laughs> Well, since you liked that, I'll tell you the truth. Over the years, she's occupied a lot of different positions on my staff. Right. Next question. What do you think of the situation in Europe, particularly the Greek crisis? I think that things, uh, thank you. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> I think that Greek right, Greece right now is broke. I think that uh, we're about three months away from them moving from using the euro to moving to the euro. And actually, I, a couple of you liked that one. That's good. I will tell you the honest goodness truth about this deal with, with Greece. I think that it's just kind of like the China situation. I think we've got a lot of old people in this country. And we've got a lot of problems with Florida and real estate. I think what we'd all do is just take over Greece or buy them for like a hundred grand and move some of our insolvent old people over there. I mean, I used to say we'd ought to move our old people up to Canada because they got socialized medicine. And, you know, if Canada says anything, we'll just point the nukes at them. 
<laughs> Which means bundle up, you old bastard. I mean, I, I think it'd be a nice deal to, and I gotta tell you something about this socialized medicine thing. I honestly do believe this. I think when you look at one industry in this country that is needing to be social, it is healthcare. I mean, I go and see the doctor and it's very sterile. If it was socialized, and I mean social, go and have a couple drinks. I want to socialize healthcare where you get to where you go in there and smoke a cigar. After a little while, you get one of them candy strippers come in and give you a sponge bath. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> yes, sir. Before you mentioned uh, Vice President Biden, uh, do you not think that Hillary is maybe stronger than she is? That's a very good question, my friend. <laughs> I couldn't help when you stood up and you looked a little bit like Cheney and I was getting ready to duck. <laughs> uh, the thing is, and I'll tell you what, you know, that Dick Cheney, they say he's heartless. Hell, he's had four. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this, uh, what we're talking about, hey, Vice President. I think, because everybody said Hillary ought to be vice presidential candidate for Barack Obama, and I disagree. I'll tell you why. I think she would have made a much better VP for John McCain. He knows what it's like to be tortured. <laughs> Next question. Uh, yes, sir. What's your thoughts on the Tea Party movement? That's a, a very strong question, to be honest with you. I, I have observed this a great deal, and I, I imagine some of you have as well. I mean, it's, uh, this Tea Party thing, they're angry. They're mad. And I dissected it, and I looked at it, and it finally dawned on me, if I joined a party and all they served was tea, I'd be pissed off also. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, I could, I could grow their ranks by millions, by just a simple name change. Long Island Iced <laughs> Tea Party. Uh, is that our last question? Do we have any more? Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I have enjoyed, did you have something? This is not really a two-person program the rest of the night here. <laughs> I have absolutely, I've absolutely enjoyed this. I, about every few years, my good friends at um, B, F, and A. <laughs> they call me up, we get together, and we drink and hang out and talk about engineering and other exciting stuff like that. And John, I was uh, really actually broken up. I couldn't make it to road school today. <laughs> but I have enjoyed this. And I do enjoy getting out and meeting with everybody like this. I mean, you never know. I mean, even when you're a former president, you still have a fairly busy schedule. This morning I woke up and I went back to my own place. And, uh, <laughs> and they said, whatever you do, don't be dull. Don't be boring. Don't get up there and put these people to sleep and give them dull, boring, long-winded talks because for God's sakes, we could have one of the engineers get up and do that. <laughs> but I want to talk to you about a couple of things that I'm very proud of. I was the first president, you know, because I can always get along with people. It don't matter whether they're engineers or people that are very disparate, North Dakotans from South Dakotans. I went to Iraq, and I got to know everybody always says, uh, you know, what do you think about them Iraqi people? I don't know why they're so angry. I mean, it's sunny, it's warm, these people spend their lives in bathrobes and sandals. We pay a lot of money to go on vacation and do that. <laughs> but one of the things I'm most proud of is I was the only United States president to ever go to India. And everybody said, why are you going to India? <laughs> and once I got there, I thought that was a pretty good question. <laughs> They make a good Slurpee, but other than that. <laughs> 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 
But I've always, I told you it's going to get worse, didn't I? <laughs> but every time I was there, they'd always come to me and they'd say, because uh, like I said, I can always get along and I'm always welcomed by people like you. And it's, it's, they said, when, welcome to India, Mr. President. While you're here, do you feel the influence and the effects of Mahatma's Gandhi? And I said, once in a while, but a shot of penicillin will clear that right up. <laughs> I'm going to stick around and take photos with each and every one of you. I'd love to talk to you. And if any of you guys have a position in, in any of your, uh, you know, your cabinets or anything where you want to pay somebody a lot of money to just show up and talk once a year, I'll be there for you. <laughs> or basically, I'd like Tom Wall's job. Thank you very much now. God bless you. Good night. Thank you, President. Thank you.